Our region's business is sponsored by PNC Bank. Solutions that help you achieve your goals in life. PNC, leading the way. And by Heffron Tillotson, a history of meticulous wealth management since 1948. Our region's business. Innovation, transformation, momentum. Improving our communities and driving technologies that will shape our region for generations. The collaboration that brings vitality, prosperity, and life to living. Stay with us for the coming half hour as we examine in depth our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on our region's business, lessons we can learn about using lights to promote economic development. Plus, how business climate change is delivering jobs and investment to our region. But first, Pittsburgh 250 gets ready to close out a year of celebration as Jim Rohr, the chairman of the initiative and of the Allegheny Conference on Community Development, gets ready to close out his three-year term with a big announcement, some very real accomplishments, and more than a bit of uncertainty about the trail ahead. Mr. Rohr is the chairman and CEO of the PNC Financial Services Group, a sponsor of our region's business. And welcome back. Good to see you again. <laughs> Hello, Bill. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's been quite a year, quite a three years, really, when you think about it. Uh, it's been amazing. I mean, and congratulations on all that you've done with Pittsburgh 250. You've really been the driving force, and we really appreciate what, what you've done. You've been very imaginative and imagine what you can do here you took that to a new level well thanks a lot, a lot of people help as, as you're aware uh, before we talk about more generally about the year and, and the what's ahead a big announcement just this past week though about air service which yes. was one of the big goals for the past three years for the Allegheny Conference well you know and you've been at the board meetings one of the real concerns that we had was we were the only major city of the top 28 I believe that didn't have a non-stop flight to Europe with all of the headquarters activity that we have here in Pittsburgh, there's a lot of people that need to get to Europe. Also, we have a number of companies that operate here that are owned by European companies, so we have a lot of transatlantic activity. And to the extent that we had to fly through Philadelphia or Newark or Cincinnati for our executives, or tourists for that matter, to get back and forth to Europe, it's very, very difficult. And they were getting frustrated because after we had lost the flight to Frankfurt and the flight to London, you know, it's been quite a while. And the great announcement today is that you'll be able to fly direct on Delta Northwest uh, starting in the spring from Pittsburgh to Paris. And the good news is from the business point of view is that all of the businesses go all over Europe. So there really wasn't one destination that was better, the other, better than the other. The tourists like to go to London, but for the most part, the businesses, you're going to have to land someplace over there on the continent or in London and then transfer to another plane anyway, which was okay. But if you went through and had to transfer in Philadelphia and then fly to Europe, you were going to have to transfer twice. And mm -hmm. this is really a great accomplishment for that. And uh, a lot of people at the Allegheny Conference, uh, Dan Honorato's team has been very, very helpful, and the governor as well. Well, a lot of what uh, was talked about last week at the conference annual meeting is this whole idea, idea of leadership and the importance of leadership to moving the region forward. I mean, it took a lot of leadership and a lot of personal effort by a lot of members of the business community as well as the public sector to get this flight. Mm -hmm. It took years. No, oh, it did. It did take years. It just takes that long for, for those airlines to make those decisions and then build them into their networks and build them into their baggage uh, claims and build it into all of the various connections they have into their system. So uh, even after the decision might have been made, it's been taking a long time before actually somebody might actually put the pen on the pencil. Well, re remarkable to have it happening, but also uh, surprising in a way, given all the uncertainty that seems to be out there right now about the state of the national economy, the global economy. Is this the right time to take the plunge on a flight like that? Well, they're okay, because we had to guarantee uh, the, the business community, and uh, along with the state, guaranteed a certain level of revenues, which I think we'll be able to surpass and we'll be okay. But we had to we had to take a little risk ourselves in order to attract that flight to Pittsburgh. So I think it's a, you know, it's a collaborative effort and I hope everybody flies to Paris. How well positioned in general do you think Pittsburgh is right now, uh, given what's going on in the national economy? Certainly signs of recession right now seem to be everywhere. Uh, some, some indications perhaps the credit crunch is being, uh, beginning to ease a little bit, but, but how well are we positioned? Well, I think we're in a recession, Bill. There's a very, no, very little question about that. We've had rising unemployment. We've had flat uh, growth in the economy. I think it's going to be down either for this quarter or next quarter for sure. So we're in a recession, and it's really problematic across the country, uh, much worse than it is in Pittsburgh. You've watched the unemployment rates across the country rise 
much more rapidly. Pittsburgh has been relatively flat. You've seen housing prices drop across the country 17.5% on average. In places like Las Vegas, 31%. Year over year, in one year, uh, Los Angeles, 27%. Uh, 17 or 18 percent across the whole state of Florida. So, you know, there's some really troubled times. And here in Pittsburgh, our housing prices are holding up uh, second only to Seattle. So if you look at what we've been able to do, you know, we lost perhaps 200,000 steel or steel-related jobs in the late 80s. We today are at the highest employment level that we've had in the history of the region. Hmm. And it's amazing as we've watched all of these other businesses, whether it be technology, health care, uh, finance, uh, the education sector, along with manufacturing, which has made a, a bounce back, uh, come back and really take us to a level that we far surpasses where we were in 83, for example, the last time that we had a mill close here in town. So, uh, And the, the good news is it's a very, very diverse economy that we have, that, that we're very diversified and very, across all the industries we're in. And so we're not dependent upon any one industry falling uh, like we were the like we were in the 70s and the 80s and clearly before that. So I think we're we're well positioned. We're going to have a recession. Parts of our economy aren't going to be as good as we'd like it to be, but we've gone through those cycles before, and I think we'll we'll fare better than our uh, than our peers. Well, that, that's uh, that's a, a hopeful sign. With a little bit of time we have left, I also want to get your thoughts about uh, on the Pittsburgh 250 side. What do you think all this has accomplished uh, for Pittsburgh? All this effort over the last three years. Uh, one of the amazing things is you recall when, when three years ago, when I became the chair of the conference, the conference had done this study that said that the Pittsburghers thought of the thought of their region at one level. Uh, the people who didn't live here thought better of us. And the people who didn't live here but had visited here thought yet more of us. Thus, the most livable city. And everybody here says, I'm amazed. Then we get it twice in seven years. Uh, I think, quite frankly, over the last three years, there's been a real building of awareness in the region about how good we really have, have it. Uh, I think people, when they got the second award for the most livable city, started to examine what they really have here. We have the shortest commute. We have one of the safest cities. We have arguably the best health care system of any city, perhaps, in the world. The cultural district has been named the number one cultural district in the country. Per, we can have an argument about whether we have the best symphony in the world. We've got the best baseball stadium. We've got the best view from Mount Washington. We have low-cost housing relative to other places. Uh, and so you think of whether it's the sport teams or the, the arts groups or the, or the, or the diverse economy, the diversified economy we have, uh, we're just very, very blessed here in Pittsburgh. And most importantly, we've got the best people. <laughs> this is a very, very friendly city and a place where you can actually get things done. And so uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be and live. And I think the Pittsburghers, when you think about the Imagine campaign, we'd have, we've had over one billion images across the country on the Imagine campaign to tell people, imagine what you could do here. And I think Pittsburgh served well for that. And it was just named one of the top 15 destinations for travel in the entire world, <laughs> which is pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, Jim Moore, congratulations on a great three years at the conference and, and with Pittsburgh 250. Well, Bill, thank you very much. It's been great being your partner. And next up, a different kind of climate change is delivering jobs and investment to our region. Stay with us.